All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the uh, webinar regarding the upcoming changes to the Microsoft uh, Unified Client Interface, or UCI. Uh, today, we're going to cover um, what UCI is all about, what's changing, how it affects iTrack, some of the pros and cons for the users, and then we're going to have uh, some open Q&A at the end as well to try to cover the questions that people might have. If you have any questions, feel free to ask it in the QA panel. Uh, as well as a wait to the end if you prefer. Uh, otherwise, or let's get going. All right. So what is the unified interface? Uh, Microsoft describes it as responsive web design principles to provide optimal viewing and interaction experience for any screen size, device orientation. It brings all the rich experiences to any interface that you're using, whether you're on a browser, tablet, phone, uh, you're all able to consume similar experiences. Now, translation, this is the new standardized UI look and feel of Microsoft applications on all devices. And it basically boils down to two things. One is the layout, the navigation, the tiles, menus, and ribbons, as well as the app styling. So that means they're styling their applications to look uh, similar to other apps. Uh, and the second bit is the back end side of the extendability of uh, platform standardization with common data services, embedded APIs and features, and their alignment to their Power Apps platform. So what is actually changing? So one of the changes that at this point, you would still need to enable the UI change. And when this becomes uh, mandatory, which is October 1, 2020, it might get auto enabled, but at this point you still have to actively do something about it or not do something about it. The overall look and feel will change. So you'll hear the verbiage that you'll hear, the current look is uh, legacy web client, whereas the new is the UCI. And the configuration options are gonna change. So it's not the full configuration like you can do in their Power App and ca Canvas App development, which they refer to as pixel perfect. This gives you configuration options. So this is also a movement to Microsoft's low code or no code design philosophy. Uh, it's designed to help people model their business data and business processes better. It's also designed to make their on-demand workflow generation easier and the distribution as an app and sharing it with other users. So most of these backend changes are invisible and in some ways unimportant to your users because they interface with the system through iTrack Mobile and that's what they know, so it makes it easy to switch. So why are we in this situation? Uh, so Microsoft CRM legacy is a bunch of bits and pieces that were introduced over time and they were never designed to work seamlessly together. So depending on what version of CRM the clients were on, 13, 15, et cetera, uh, there were different technologies for making it work on the browser versus uh, on the phone versus other devices. So they're moving away from that. And now it's been announced as finally being official. And so customers have to move. So who's actually eligible for UCI? That's everybody that's on the Dynamics 365 online versions. So essentially that's known as version nine. All right, so there's nine zero, nine one, and then there's probably a nine two coming up. So any version, whether it's customer engagement, sales, finance and operations, that's all eligible. Things that are not eligible for change to the UCI would be the CRM 2011, 13, 15 and 16, which are essentially all the on-premise versions of Dynamics. So the change is being made uh, it's not new. Uh, Microsoft originally announced this plan, this transition plan back in 2017. So they've just been realizing it for a while. And the path to standardization has been going on for quite a while. And people would have seen this in their other products. So by now the interface is a little dated and the elements you'll be seeing uh, looks and feels more like their Outlook or Office 365 uh, platform. And, and that's no surprise. Uh, so it should be designed to be more modern, more usable, faster. It streamlines the data usage and functionality, makes everything more modular and flexible to control. So kind of on the back end side, or some of it is front end, is made a, a data driven approach. So it's a data about data and it allows you to do more with the system without knowing how to code. So that focuses on business users, people that are interested in process, and in theory should be more user friendly. Key to this is that all new investment from Microsoft is going to be in this platform, so it's getting them set up and ready for the next generation of devices and developers. It's also going to allow them to purge their legacy, their multiple code bases for previous versions, different uh, feature sets, and so on and so forth. So this is this is big for Microsoft, and most of it is applicable to us as developers, less so to the end users. But 
there's a bunch of key things that would be beneficial to the users. So some of those things are less clicking, less scrolling, less pop-ups. Uh, the screens are meant to be more data dense and uh, more interactive. There'll be better subgrids or panels. There'll be consistency across other platforms that you've seen like desktop and mobile. It uses a sitemap style of navigation, which we'll show in the demo. It introduces options like recently viewed and pinned. Uh, it does reduce loading times and rendering. There's some stats uh, from Microsoft to back that up. Uh, there's some neat features about auto resizing, which uh, allows it to be uh, is scalable. Uh, there's better dashboard visuals. There's better control visuals and filters. Um, and um, additionally, there's uh, more role focused tasking. What that means is that if you configured your app uh, to show people different things based on their security roles, the, the new platform will respond to that. So it's a little bit different way of dealing with the system. A couple other bits and pieces. So the WCAG compliancy, uh, this is designed for software developers who need to uh, accommodate people with poor vision, low vision, that sort of thing. So that's what web content accessibility guidelines are about. Um, and as part of that, you get the color control, you didn't have before, and there's other bits and pieces that you'll see in the demo, uh, things like breadcrumbs, collapsible menus. So the goal of all this has been to make a more intuitive design interface. So let's go ahead and uh, talk about, uh, or rather show you, the demo of what it would look like. So the home screen, the landing page, would be different based on how your system is configured. So for example, if I have multiple uh, business apps on top of iTrack, my homepage would look like something like this. Whereas if I had a more standard sales type homepage, I would still land here. And then if I had something uh, akin to, uh, let's say a, a support desk, I would see a dashboard like this. So on its own, it doesn't really change everything that you've seen, but it certainly changes the look and feel. So things like dashboards, they're all, all interactive. You're able to drill down in a lot of cases. You're able to select different visuals right from uh, the dashboard itself without having to go in, into a setting menu. It also scales uh, dynamically. So if I change my window size to be half the width that was previously, it's gonna try to uh, accommodate that as best as possible. So if I'm using it on a tablet or a mobile, this is scalable. So Microsoft calls this reflow and it's going to do so dynamically. So right now, let's say I'm going to make the window very tall. And so the panel that was previously on the right is now below that uh, funnel diagram. So Microsoft calls this reflow or scaling and this is what it looks like. Okay. So a lot of these other uh, things um, are not new in the fact that the feature wasn't there. It just changes the look and feel of some of these items. Okay. Let me pull up a slightly different window. And let's talk about some of the other things. And so you'll notice right off the bat that the white spacing is different. It's a little bit more data dense. Uh, it's trying to make efficient use of space. It's creating um, opportunities for better UI. So a little bit more consistency, a little bit nicer colors. Those are kind of little bits and pieces that Microsoft likes doing. Um, it's try to expose the frequently used buttons. So right here in the ribbon would be an example of those things. So the quick ads, the deletes, um, the linking to business process flows, the ability to run reports, so that's all set in the, rib uh, in the ribbon and it's meant to be easily accessible. And then the bar above it, I think they call that the command bar. It gives you access to uh, search screens, connection to task flows, the relationship assistant, uh, quick add, and advanced find and settings and things of that nature. Now, the bigger change would be the sitemap style navigation. So that what that means is this bar on the left is now your primary driver of where you go in the system. So previously it was at the top. Now the top has been replaced with a breadcrumb. So this rather shows me where I am in the system rather than what I click to get other menus. So this side panel is also collapsible. So if I don't want to see it and create a little bit more real estate for myself, like for example, to see uh, different uh, dashboards that are quite wide, you can collapse it and you can still access home and your accounts leads, et cetera. So I'll expand it for now. And uh, obviously anybody would see similar interaction with the system if you've used Outlook, um, Office 365, things of that nature. 
Um, there is also another feature where um, if you have multiple security permissions to see different areas, uh, such as, for example, a sales hub versus a help desk hub, um, that would be designed into this little area switcher at the bottom. And if you select it, it changes your menu options on the left. So this is, again, uh, security driven and not every user would get to see that. I mentioned recent and pinned. So recent, it uh, if you click that menu, it'll show you everywhere you've been and allows you to quickly jump between uh, different uh, menu options, anything that you're allowed to see, obviously. And then you can also pin frequently chosen menus. And this could be anything. This could be accounts, this could be leads, this could be users, this could be pretty much anything. So clicking on those will just take me to the record directly without having to go to, in this case, accounts first. Okay. Uh, let's talk about uh, list views. So if you're now in any list view, such as an accounts list, and you go into one of the accounts, uh, if you want to go into a different account, you don't have to jump back. There's a little icon up here, and if I click it, it expands all the other items that were on that list, and now I can just toggle between those. And so it makes it a little bit uh, less dependent on clicking back on the menu, and that's part of that uh, less quick clicks faster navigation um, thing that Microsoft is going for. The next thing that they've spent a fair bit of time on is making tabs tabs. So uh, if you've got tabs under your accounts, you can click through and each um, each tab will have different information panels. The panels the, themselves are designed to be uh, customizable and uh, as well as uh, better visually. OK. Now, uh, let's talk about a couple of new additions. One of the introductions with UCI is this timeline, sometimes also referred to as relationship assistant. This is um, a multi-source panel that automatically aggregates uh, data from other locations, such as emails if you're um, connected to Outlook, as well as you can the ability to post directly into the timeline. So this is designed for environments where multiple users are working on the same account or the same lead at the same time, so you can leave notes for each other. You can also attach documents directly into the timeline as well. So shareability, um, accessibility, those are the kind of things that they're trying to achieve. Let me talk about another feature that some people would be familiar with. And again, this will uh, show showcase some of the visual changes that Microsoft is introducing with the UCI. So leads have this um, timeline option at the top. So they've changed how the visuals are from the previous version before it was um, kind of uh, boxy windows. So now they've introduced some better visuals and they've also introduced the ability to um, dock these things into essentially to-do lists on the right-hand side of the window. So again, this all just plays into the ability to do more information on screen without having to drill into another menu. Okay. So any questions right now? And this has covered quite a bit of information. I want to make sure that everybody's um, caught up and understands what we're showing. A okay. um, couple things to note. So this is all user centric. Uh, and some of the things uh, such as settings, the system settings, for example, would have a slightly different look and feel, but what it uh, is powered by is their, the Power Apps um, style navigation. So this is an example, I'm an entity record. So for people that are configuring the system, they would see this sort of UI. That might be familiar to some people and might not to others. And there's also this look of the Power Apps UI. So again, this would be the type of UIs that you might be uh, seeing. And again, as you can see, the look and feel of this is quite similar. So even though I'm in a configuration zone that the average person would never see, an administrator that would come in here would see the same kind of things. So they would see, they would see the left-hand navigation menu, they would see the ability to collapse menus, they would see the, the breadcrumb and command bars and so on and so forth. Okay. All right. One second, let me just look and see if I've missed anything. Yeah, there's some other bits and pieces too, like the ability to tie into the Power Apps much more easily. 
for uh, languages uh, that are right to left, like uh, Arabic and uh, some of the uh, uh, Asiatic languages. That's also handled in this. Um, there's also better ability to handle long field names and um, things of that nature. That's a lot more technical than probably the other person needs to know, but it's good to mention. All right, so that's it for the demo. Let me jump back into my presentation and go on. So how do these changes affect iTrack customers specifically? Well, for people that interact with iTrack, do so predominantly via mobile. Uh, there's some people interact via portal and other people interact with Dynamics directly. Microsoft UCI changes affects the Dynamics 365 platform directly, and iTrack obviously runs on the Dynamics platform. So things like menus, navigations, and vi visuals will actually change uh, how everything looks and feels. And the latest version of iTrack was coded to be UCI compatible from the beginning, because as we know, this is, this is not a new change. We've had lead time to make the changes. However, the changes are not backward compatible to past versions of iTrack. So the app will stop working correctly if the unified interface is turned on for old versions of iTrack. And in the future, our version 415, which is going to be our summer release, will only work with UCI as staying on the le legacy web client will not be an option for anybody. Okay, that's for our online dynamics customers. The good thing is Microsoft, uh, the migration upgrade, whatever you want to call it, is not mandatory at the moment. So what should you do? If you're a customer that's on version 413 or the fourth, forthcoming 414, you're already compatible and you can transition to ECAI at any time without any issues. If you are on 412 or older, uh, we recommend that you do not transition at this time. We cannot guarantee the compatibility because of the reasons outlined on the earlier slide. So those customers, we need to make a plan to upgrade everyone uh, before the deadline reaches October 1st. Okay, so in most cases that's going to be eye track, but in some cases it might be Dynamics itself. So for those customers that are not on 413, they need to contact their consultant, the CSM, or even support a Neo systems to get the process kicked off. Customers that are on iTrack 3 are not affected by this at all. However, if they're planning to migrate from the 3 to 4 series, they would need to make sure that they're updating to the latest version of Dynamics and the app at the same time. Customers that are on-premise need to consider cloud migration as well uh, because the on-prem customers are not able to move beyond iTrack 4.11. Okay. So if you are compatible and ready to migrate, the instructions are embedded in this presentation. You can just follow them and essentially you go into the pl our platform admin center and you make the change there. Okay. So if people are wanting to try this out, we recommend that you do it in the sandbox first. Um, users should be given some communication uh, that the changes are going to happen. Uh, we don't anticipate that you need to train them, showing people what the changes are going to be because most of the navigation is intuitive. It's just been visualized differently. And that's about it. So to get a little bit more specific, uh, the migrations plan will be slightly different for dependent on the version combination that you're at. So uh, as I already mentioned, if you're eligible for UCI and you're on iTrack version 413, you can test the change, communicate to your users, pick a date, uh, do some training if you like, and enable UCI in production. The Dynamics upgrade, for example, to go from 9.0 to 9.1 is optional in this case. If you are on iTrack version 4.12 or uh, earlier, do not upgrade. Contact Neo Systems first. You've got till October 1, uh, and you can only upgrade uh, to UCI after we get you caught up. Now, if you're on one of the versions that's not eligible for UCI and uh, version 4.11, you can't upgrade to UCI. So you basically have to go to the latest version of Dynamics Online first, and then you could uh, enable UCI but then we'd have to get you caught up onto the iTrack side of things as well. For people that are on the non-eligible versions of Dynamics and on an older version, like so 4.10, uh, 4.9, 4.8, 4.7, uh, you can actually upgrade iTrack versions themselves without having to upgrade Dynamics, but then if you want to go to the latest and greatest version, you'd have to upgrade Dynamics and iTrack. Okay? If this is not clear enough, feel free to talk to us uh, afterwards and we'll, we'll happily explain everybody's individual cases. Okay. Some other notes. So depending on which versions of Dynamics you're currently using, you might have seen some of these elements already. So there's, there's a feature called hybrid experience that's been available for over a year and some people have turned it on. So it was kind of a mixed bag of a little bit of legacy, a little bit of UCI. So some of the functionality in Dynamics currently works in both the legacy and the UCI version. 
So this is temporary. At some point, Microsoft will get rid of that ability, but there are some functions that work uh, in, uh, in both. So some functions are not yet on UCI, some are read only, and some are being actively removed. So there's a lot of different moving parts, and we recommend that you go to the link attached or talk to your Microsoft representative about the specifics. What this is key is if you've got other Dynamics developments outside of iTrac, uh, that might be important to you. Unless otherwise noted, we've already considered these changes in the UCI compatibility check for iTrac. When you're doing the UCI change themselves, there's no server downtime. The change is immediate. It's just a switch on and off. And for those people that are interested in upgrading, each uh, version jump of iTrack requires approximately two hours per version. And so that may require some downtime. Uh, so if you're just going up one version, yeah, you know, it can be done in a day. If you're going up a bunch of versions, it might take longer. So that's that's the lead time. So I'm including sort of the best bits uh, of this information. Um, I think if you're needing to communicate to your users, for example, about the change, there's a Microsoft YouTube video that would cover this pretty well, and as well as a document about the unified interface. If you need to communicate this to your admins, again, there's a, a longer video on YouTube and uh, a, a link that I think is kind of a, explains it in the best way possible. I'm including a lot of other additional information for people that really want to dig, it, dig into it. This is just the edge of an iceberg. There are a lot of uh, information on the Microsoft web page directly and on other third party apps. There's a dynamics community, there's a white papers, there's frequently asked questions PDFs. There's a whole lot of information. Nobody should be short of information. And, all right, so that covers quite a bit of information. So right now we're going to open it up for QA. So you can either ask your questions or send them to us in the in the panel. And if you don't think of a question right now and want to send it to us later, feel free to email support at Neosystems. And if you know that you're going to have to make a migration plan, contact your consultant or CSN at Neosystems to make that plan for you. Okay. So there's a question, does team license enforcement wave one release from Microsoft have any impact on iTrack? Oh, right. This was a question from earlier, from the last webinar. Uh, we are in the process of checking that. Uh, I think the answer is no, but uh, I'll find out for you formally, Mark. Okay, so while we're waiting, I'll cover cover couple little slides that I've got. It's just an appendices. So I've mentioned performance improvements. So Microsoft did some testing and they found that the grid load uh, is improved through this sort of new change in UCI. So for people that have pre previously um, had issues with the app being slow, for example, this should improve things. The ability to create custom visual controls has been expanded quite a bit. So these are the filters. So for people that are doing custom app development or even us as a developer on the Microsoft platform, we'll be able to introduce more interesting things down the road as well. So this is called the component framework layer. And uh, for people that are administrators, this might be interesting. So um, I already mentioned uh, that the UCI has to be turned on at the system level in the Power Platform Admin Center. Uh, people that are playing around in the system settings might notice a couple uh, things that says, you know, using unify face only or show legacy that's actually not the switch that you turn on um, so don't don't get confused with that so that's just something else and it's one of those features that's kind of in flux and might not actually do anything on your particular version it's hard to say because i don't know what version people are on all right we're going to leave it uh, open for another five ten minutes if people want to ask questions but otherwise thank you for your time and uh, we'll be sharing this video as well